Do you know what the air quality in your home or your environment is? Well, you can find out now with this Air One sensor. Today, I'll be talking about this, digging into it, showing you a little bit about it and getting it connected to Home Assistant. So let's get started. All right, so let's take a quick look at this. This is the Air One sensor by uh, Apollo Automation. And it's not very big. It's bigger than some of their MSR sensors and their motion sensors. Here's a AAA battery for uh, some co size comparison. And you can see the specs of uh, this device on their website, the actual measurements. And here's a pin for comparison as well. It has a USB-C port on here. Uh, and it has the mesh all around it for picking up the air, air on it. And unlike their other sensors, this one does not uh, just slide off. The case doesn't slide off. You actually have to take it apart. So let's go ahead and do that and see what's inside this device. And it uses these little, uh, I guess they're security bits. They're somewhat square. Can you see that? Something like that. And I've got a little square bit on my driver here for that. Now, once you get all the screws out, the cover just lifts off like that. And then here's the internals. One of the things you might want to do with this is uh, be able to add uh, optional sensors. Uh, this is a CO2 sensor that's optional. This is uh, optional in a number of their, their products. And this is uh, now installed on this one. There is also an optional MIC or an optional gas sensor. And I'm looking at the diagram that's on their uh, website here. And I see this right here is the connector for the MICS 4514. And I'm looking inside of my device here and I don't see it like that, but I think I do see the MICS or I do see the gas sensor right here. Uh, and it's on the side over, over here. Now there's a little screw in here that I've already pulled out because I'm going to take this out that holds this down. Uh, I'm going to just try to lift this out and see what we've got inside here. That's easy. And we're looking at the bottom of the board. There are some optional connectors you can also get uh, for this that also allows you to connect other things. Now this does have that. This has the, the gas sensor on here and there's the gas I assume this is the gas sensor right here. And what else is in here? This right here is your, um, your main sensor. It's, it comes installed. Uh, it's a Sensirion sensor or Sensirion device. It's the Sen S, uh, SEN 55. So that's the, the main sensor that you're going to get for your particulate matter and VO, VOC and other things. And then your gas sensor again is over here. Now I'm not sure if I'm looking at the board upside down in this, in this particular diagram, uh, where this is sitting because it shows the CO2 sensor on top. And then it shows the other sensor underneath. And again, looking at this, the CO2 sensors up here. And then, um, I don't see anything on the top to be able to connect that gas sensor, but it is connected underneath here. So I just, it may be a documentation thing. And, um, I'm sure that the, the, the team over at Apollo automation will figure that out and let me know. And then I can let you know in the comments. So there it is. That's the inside. I'm not going to take it completely apart. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. You can, uh, slide these little grates out if you want to do something with those. This one doesn't come out very easily because that board is tucked in there pretty good. And I don't want to mess with that gas sensor. This side comes out. There's the fan that takes in the, uh, the airflow to be able to check the, uh, the different particulate matter stuff in your environment. All right. So that's the device itself. And I will spare you the agony of putting it back together on the camera. And I will plug it back in here in just a second. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, my readings and all that other stuff. So before I do that, though, let's let's get into some of the details of this device itself. This is a um, just like the rest of their stuff, an ESP based device. It's a 61 millimeters square by 30 millimeters 
in height, and it measures uh, PM1, PM2.5, PM4, PM10, VOC, NOx, temperature, and humidity. Now, just like all the rest of their stuff, let me get me a little mouse highlight going here. There is a temperature offset needed because the ESP32 C3 board is pretty hot. It runs all the time and just keeps the inside of that case heated up. Um, so you have uh, all of these measurements are via the SIN55, which I showed you inside there. And then your optional uh, devices or optional sensors are this carbon monoxide, uh, CO2, or CO, and then ethanol, ammonia, methane, and uh, then there's the CO2 SCD40 optional sensor. So that little one I showed you there is the optional sensor. So this is the optional CO240 or SCD40 sensor. And the other one that I showed you up here, this C, uh, this sensor right here, the MICS4514, is the optional sensor that, according to the documentation, plugs in right here, but on my board, it happens to be underneath it. So there's that. Uh, what else we have on here? Uh, it measures barometric pressure via the DPS 310, and the DPS 310 is on the board. I thought I saw it somewhere here. Any, oh, pressure sensor, it's on the board. Now, this revision of the board is not what we have in the unit I have. I have a revision seven board. I'm not sure which revision this is, but things are not in the same place as the other board. So that's why the connectors are not right where, right exactly where they're supposed to be, according to that diagram. All right, well, let's let's uh, move on then. Bluetooth tracker, if you wanna do some YAML configuration, you can uh, set up some Bluetooth tracking. It's got three RGB pixels in here. And what I'm gonna do is, let's see if I can uh, make them show here. If I unplug it and plug it back in, you'll see those three pixels light up. There's three of them on the board. And when it first boots up, it does that where it shines the or lights up the pixels. Now you can set those pixels and they give you some uh, different examples here. Flash red if the air quality is unhealthy, flash green if it's your trash day, you know, if it's fine, whatever, you can use this for whatever you want. So you have, um, what else, some extras. You always have access to their Discord. You have access to the code and CAD files for all their products that allows you to do your own experimentation with this. Now, just like anything else ESP related, it's easy to put these in to Home Assistant using ESP Home. So turn it on, it'll, find, it'll show up as the uh, Air One hotspot. And then once you turn that or connect to that, uh, you will be able to set the Wi-Fi hotspot or set your Wi-Fi credentials for this. Anyway, so once you have this connected to the uh, internal hotspot on the Air One, you can go to either automatically it'll pull up the web page or you go to 192.168.4.1 and that allows you to choose your Wi-Fi network and insert your credentials. And once you have your credentials set up, it'll connect to your network and then you can go ahead and get off of that as the access point and move on with the next step. And the next step is gonna be adding it to Home Assistant. Now, if you've done everything correctly and this device is on the same network as your Home Assistant instance, you should be able to just go in here and you will have a notification over here on the notification tab. And it'll say new device is discovered. This is true of pretty much any ESP device that you set up. So you can click on check it out and you'll see here you have the Apollo Air 1. You wanna configure that. And it asks you if you wanna add it to your Home Assistant so click a submit for yes. It said successful. It'll ask you to choose an area if you want to do that. And I'll just say that, and then we'll finish. And once that's all set up, then it will show up as a device in your ESP home devices. Click on that. And here is the Air one. And then you click on that and it takes you to the page with all of the goodies. Now, depending on the configuration that you have, you will have a number of sensors listed here. So these, uh, this particular unit came with the ammonia sensor or the MICS sensor, this one right here. It has the optional gas sensor. So I have um, ammonia, carbon monoxide, all these things, all these extra sensors as well. 
uh, the ethanol, hydrogen, methane, and nitrogen dioxide. Now, let me uh, mention something that they talk about here. The beta testing group for this uh, sensor right here, the MICS4514, says that um, they noticed that any type of reading will spike the methane reading. So they, the, they at Apollo believe that this is manageable for the vast amount of automation. So still wanted to just update the community and let us know that either it's going to be all or nothing for that methane sensor. Basically, they say it's a much more either it exists or doesn't exist type of gas monitoring. It should be zero for normal air. If you have anything above zero on the methane, then check your gases and see what might be spiking that. Uh, we have PPM measurements here for all of the different particulate matter uh, measurements. Uh, we have the humidity and then our VOC, which is our all of our pollutants in our air. I did some reading on VOC, by the way, and VOC, there's no uh, standard that says, well, this VOC is high, this VOC is low. There are some that mention that out there, some websites. The problem with VOC and setting a standard is that there are so many things that create this type of um, a chemical in your environment. And in, in even so much as someone saying that certain plants, the perfume or the whatever that the plant gives off, harmless to us, but it does create a higher VOC. But there is no, no specific VOC reading. But what, has, what uh, Apollo has done, I see here, is they set the VOC quality as a text value as well. In my other Home Assistant instance where I've got this and have had it running a little bit longer, you can see here that the VOC quality has changed from different values. And it goes from anywhere from normal to abnormal to extremely abnormal. And then it just kind of runs down and it's sitting at improved now. My, my VOC levels have changed over time. But right now, sitting at something that's manageable here, it says it's normal. These readings, the one thing I just want you to take away with these readings is that you need to understand what they mean. Some of them actually have values that mean something. Some of them have values that are informational, and you just need to kind of understand what that means to your environment and apply it to your environment. The VOC is one of those. Now, the PM stuff, this is more uh, standardized, and it's on their documentation, takes the air quality measurements from a very reputable, manu uh, reputable manufacturer. And the sensor that is in this device has a 10 year lifespan for continuous use. Some of the sensors that are out there only have three years. So those readings are based on this, this reputable company. So I assume we can go ahead and trust these as values that are calibrated and ready to use. Now the CO2 sensor up here, this one has a calibration the SCD40, and that's this optional SCD41 here that reads your uh, yeah, your CO2 levels. And you have to calibrate this. And the way you do this is you basically take it outside where there's clearer air, cleaner air supposedly, let it sit for three to five minutes, and then you, you push the calibrate button. And that will bring the calibration into what it should be. And I've done that already. Right now, my CO2 level here is about 1,015, which is high. I'm in an enclosed space right now and there's no real circulation. And so that makes sense for me. So that's uh, that's this added to Home Assistant. Some of the other things to talk about here are the humidity and temperature offsets. Now they comes out of the box with about a six degree Celsius offset. The temperature of the ESP is 110.7 degrees. And remember, that's why you need to do a calibration on it because when you're reading the temperature from the sensor inside the unit, it's going to show you the temperature that it's picking up. And so the calibration that they've done already puts it about 73.8 degrees. That's pretty close to what my room is here. So adding this offset will help you set that the way it needs to be set to account for this ESP uh, temperature or this high temperature on the ESP board. Let's talk about configurations. Uh, you can get this in different configurations. You can get it with no CO2 sensor. You can get it with the CO2 sensor. This says no gas gas sensor, and I'm not sure what that means right now. I wonder if that means that they don't have the gas sensor available because this is this is a, a marked out right now. And then you have options for no GPIO header. You can get a GPI header only, or you can get the GPI header 
with DuPont cables. And if you look at the DuPont cables, that's this right here. This allows you to connect in other sensors. And what they're saying on the website is you can also connect in some other stuff that's currently in development that may be available later on that will use these uh, connectors to get on there. That was the Air One sensor and the internals and some of the things that I've learned about it over the last uh, little bit that I've been playing with it. Uh, if you want one of these things, I've got links down below. You can click on it is a, a, an affiliate link that helps me out a little bit here. Uh, and then also I will have an associated blog post where you can read a little bit about the details. So if you have any questions, you can put those in the comments down below. You can also hit me up on Discord. Uh, if you are a channel member, I really appreciate that. And if you support me in other areas like Ko-fi or Patreon, those are also available as well. All of that helps me continue to make these videos. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not, hit that button. It helps the algorithm. I'm sure you've heard that a thousand times. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.